thank you for watching this video subscribe to my channel in this reminder i want to talk about what christ said don't throw your pearls before swine when you type in in google or in yahoo or in or in dolphin or in whatever search engine you use don't throw pearls for swine the most common definition of this thing that's provided is don't waste time or effort on people that won't appreciate you nor what you're doing and it's practical it's a practical interpretation when i came to faith first and i read that that's what i understood of it and i shared this also on this youtube channel years back but when you look at the bigger picture because when you are reading what christ said look at the bigger picture because christ isn't dealing with the small picture he looks at things in their entirety when you look at the bigger picture what christ is saying here you'll notice more things people tend to look on the small picture like people appreciating you or not or people becoming upset and you don't want to upset people because you don't want any awkward situation so you leave people alone that's what people make of it because people want to be at ease and there's nothing wrong with people wanting to be at ease but they but there's a there's a trap here and this is a trap that christ is preventing you from being trapped by this is what christ is warning you for of course you don't want awkward situations of course you don't want friction so of course you back off from people that have a will against you you're not going to look for danger are you of course not of course you want to get along of course you will concede when people are violent for example when you have a bank robber or, or let's say a robber with a gun you concede you cast away your belongings so that the robber will not take your life or wound you or let's say that you have people that keep complaining about something after a while you may cast away your your stance and think you know what you're right why then there's ease so such things are understandable and that is what people preach that you need to know when to stop so that people won't get pissed off and turn on you it's practical advice but is that really the intention of what christ said here don't cause your pearls for swine christ did tell you to shake the dust off your feet and move on that's true but causing pills for, for swine there's another reason why christ said that now look at the bigger picture please when christ walked the earth you had horses they were used for chariots and yet sail ships yet no fast technology so to travel around you either went by foot or you used horses with chariots or you went on a donkey but that was quite slow so traveling was quite expensive and it took days so not even weeks and swine are the type of animals you didn't want to encounter why because they were dangerous they could just attack you and if you're on your way somewhere you don't want that um they carry diseases with them even though many people didn't have biological knowledge them but still they carry diseases because they had all kinds of bacteria in their bodies the, sw the swine also fed of garbage like uh, excrement and all of that so they also had a bad smell with them and swine often hung around in groups and in groups they were dangerous could devour you so swine were the type of animals you don't want to encounter and everyone knew that so nobody in their right mind would want to be near a swine nor have swine near them so when the christ said don't throw your pearls for swine or don't cast your pearls for swine people would have looked at them and think jesus what are you saying here if you would have told us don't cast your pearls before thieves well, okay that's reasonable but before swine come on jesus you know that nobody in the right minds want to hold on to a swine do you but here's the thing your natural understanding can deceive you 
Christ told us in the Old Testament. Do not rely on your own understanding. Now let me tell you, when you rely upon your own understanding, even if your own understanding works for you, you can be throwing pearl. You can be throwing pearls before swine, or I'm saying casting pearls before swine without you being aware of it. Because you look at situation and situation works. But you don't look at the bigger picture. Now okay. Let's continue. When do you cast something before someone? I mentioned before. For example, if someone comes with a gun to you or a knife and wants your purse, you cast your purse. You you give it up, you forfeit it, because you realize your life is far more important than your belongings. Or if you're in a situation and you realize that it could escalate, you tend to appease the other individual by cooperating with individuals so things won't get out of hand. And that's a practical thing to do. There's nothing wrong with that. But just understand that there are certain types of people that have no interest in peace whatsoever. They want to be relieved at all costs. Now, people in general want relief. That's how worldly people are. But there are people that want relief at all costs. And such people, they are not reliable at all. They are not operating in reality. They are operating in some alternative universe. They are not real. Okay? So such people, you cannot be at peace with them. So you cannot walk in peace with such people. To think you can, well that's a big mistake. A mistake that may even cost you your life or cost or bring a lot of danger on you. Look, casting pearls for swine, think of it this way. When you cast something before someone, you forfeit it. Because you think in this situation, this is not valuable. Now look, when it comes to a bank robber, you hand over the money. Of course, the money is less important than your life and the safety of people around you. That's true. But apart from such obvious situations, look at daily circumstances this way. People want peace. And that's a good thing. Nobody wants contention and strife because that is bad for your health. It will take away the, the joys that you have in life. So nobody wants that. People want to be at ease. People want to be left alone. And it's this longing to be left alone that's trapping people. Much of our own understanding is related to how we can be left alone. So we comply, we cooperate so that we are left alone. That it works. I'm not saying it's bad in itself. Christ did similar things, but you need to know when you just need to walk away from a situation, whatever it is. Because look, in the New Testament, it's also written, do not cast away thy confidence. Your confidence is you walking by faith. Why would the word tell us not to cast away our confidence if it wasn't possible for us to cast away our confidence? Because this is what happens. Not always, but this happens. Yet when walking by faith, they operate in the power. Contention arises. People begin to will against them. So they begin to give in to what people will so that they are left alone. And Christ is telling you, don't do that. When you do this, you are casting pearls before swine. Because your confidence in walking by faith are like a bunch of pearls. It's powerful. Why? When you walk by faith, when you, when you agree with Christ, you choose for long-term permanent health, biblical abundance, uh, supernatural provision, permanent youth. Your youth is renewed every day. Um, you overrule violence because you cast out the spirit of fear and spirit of violence so when you walk supernaturally yeah, man you operate in the power it's quite powerful and you need to operate in this power to overrule danger around you so when folks begin to retaliate against you because you walk supernaturally don't Cast away your confidence in walking supernaturally just to get ease with those people. Don't!
Look, I'm not talking about religious freaks here that go in the streets and scream the truth. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those that really walk supernaturally. Because when Christ said this, don't cast your pearls for swine, he was talking to believers, talking to those that agree with him. He was not talking to the, to the religious zealot out there. He wasn't. So, when you walk supernaturally, realize that people will be upset with you. Not all people, but there are people who will be upset with you. But they won't have a reason for it. Because there is no reason for it. It's just that they want to be relieved at all costs. And such people don't want to be challenged. And when you walk by faith and you overrule violence and the negative around you, you challenge them. Why? Because they are operating in darkness. They are sustaining the darkness that's here on the earth. So they are responsible for what they enable. But they don't want to be dealt with. But you, walking by faith, you're dealing with them. And they can't stand that. So they will come with all types of accusations to you just to make you stop walking by faith so they are at ease. And I'm telling you, when you stop walking by faith, what happens? You're not operating the power anymore. You become vulnerable. And when you're vulnerable, don't think those people that you want peace with are going to protect you. They don't. They only consider their own relief. They couldn't care less about your safety, nor the safety of other people for that manner. So, when you cast away your confidence in walking by faith, you are opening yourself to be attacked. Because those same people that become upset when you walk by faith are the same people that will turn on you anyway when you comply with their wishes. Why? Because they are in the negative. So the fact they are upset because you walk in the real, you walk in health, wealth, and you walk in uh, safety because violence can't harm you anymore. Nobody in their right mind would be against you walking in such power. You operate in the real, you operate in real safety, in real health, in real wealth. Anyone in the right mind would look at you and think, whoa, I want it also. Let me be inspired. Look, you're not operating in witchcraft. You're not operating in um, criminality. You're operating in the real. So anyone in the right mind would want that also. Would also be inspired and look for Christ. Nobody in the right mind would hold on to the negative. But that's what a lot of folks do. So if they're holding on to the negative, they're the ones enabling the negative, not you. So even if you comply with them, it's still wrong. You know why? Because the negative comes from them. They're the ones holding on to it. So if they want to get rid of the negative, they need to repent. They need to, they need to give it up. But they value that relief in the negative more than real safety. That's what they're doing. So now, they are triggered because you don't agree with their negative. Now, why are they triggered because someone's holding on? So if they want the triggering to stop, they need to look for safety. They need to repent. They don't want that. They want you to comply with them so they are at ease. What happens? They want you to become vulnerable to them so, they, so that they can have control over you. And when you comply, they'll leave you alone. But they will still hold on to the negative, and the negative will still harm other people, and including so it will also harm you. That's why Christ said, don't cause your pearls before swine. Why? That's the swine will turn away from you, they'll leave you alone, but they'll trample the pearls and they'll turn around to devour you. Because they didn't care about the pearls at all. It was just about them being relieved at all costs. So when Christ said, don't cause your pearls before swine, he was really, he was really telling you, don't for faith your confidence in him just to be at peace with those that don't want real safety because real true safety is found in christ alone because there's absolute safety over there anyone in the right mind who realizes this would go to christ for safety for shelter those that hold on to danger don't seek peace with them because you can't be at peace with them you walk in peace towards them so you keep your safe distance, you comply with external demands of society to, to the extent that it's reasonable. So you are 
um, contributing to peace. You're not looking for trouble and all of that. Just realize you can't be at peace with everyone. And that's the thing with the false peace that Antichrist is bringing. Well, has been bringing for, for centuries. Antichrist wants you to agree with the peace that will imply that you will throw your pearls before swine with the belief that if the swine are appeased by your cooperation, they'll appreciate it and they'll become friendly towards you and there's no war anymore. That's not going to happen at all. Some of you who may have been harmed by hardcore relief seekers, deep-rooted narcissists, some of you know what I'm talking about. You can't be at peace with such folks. So don't throw away your confidence, which is far more valuable than pearls, to be at peace with those that, want, that don't want peace. Because they don't want real peace. They want relief, not peace. So when they demand peace from you, they're asking the impossible because they are not in peace. Look, I'm recording this to remind you and to encourage you. Yes, you shake the dust off your feet, you do that, absolutely. But understand the other part also. You can't be at peace with everyone. You keep walking in peace, that's your part. But walk in peace with everyone, that's not possible. Okay? Well, that's it for now. Agree with Christ and be at peace.